Motion by Hobson, seconded by Singh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. We're now going to have a public hearing on amendment number 22-1 to the Burlington County District Solid Waste Management Plan, approving the 2021 District Solid Waste Management Plan update. Anyone who wishes to speak on other topics will have a chance to do so later in the meeting. When it is your turn to speak, please state your full name and address for the record. Each speaker is limited to four minutes and may speak only once per comment portion. The public hearing is now open. Luis Lopez. Good evening, my name is Luis Lopez. I live in 98 and I live in Tri Manhattan, New Jersey. Wait till you get to the microphone yeah. so we can record you. Good evening, free orders. Good evening, Ms. Felicia. Uh, my name is Louis Silver. I live 98 Lewis Drive, Mount Holly, New Jersey, 08060. Are you going to change the way uh, the process is so the ways? Or are you going to keep uh, the same way as last year? Or any changes? This is a public hearing on an amendment to our solid waste management plan. I think you want to speak in our next comment period. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you, Louis. <coughs> Anybody for comments on amendment number 22-1? Anybody with a comment? Last going once, twice, seeing none. I'm closing this portion of the public comment. We're now going to have a public hearing on amendment number 22-2 to the Burlington County District Solid Waste Management Plan, approving a Class A recycling center for Allied Recycling in Springfield Township. Anyone who wishes to speak on other topics will have a chance to do so later in the meeting. When it is your turn to speak, please state your full name and address for the record. Each speaker is limited to four minutes and may only speak once per public comment portion. The public hearing is now open. Anybody for public comment on amendment number 22-2? Once, twice, seeing none, I'm closing this portion of public comment. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolutions H1 and H2 for unanimous consent. So moved. Second. 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 Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Before we move on to public comments, I'd like to share an important update. Tonight, we're introducing our county's 2022 budget. The details will be posted on our county website this week, but I'm pleased to tell you tonight that the tax levy for county government operations is remaining flat. This wasn't easy, and I want to thank Carolyn Havlick, our county's chief financial officer, and her staff in the Department of Finance for all the work they did to prepare this budget. Responsible government means being good stewards with our residents' tax dollars, and this budget reflects sound fiscal management. It also reflects our county's priorities and values, and one of our core values is to maintain our residents' quality of life through the preservation of open space and farmland. Most of you know our county has an outstanding record on this, but more needs to be done. Every day we hear about developers targeting more and more land in our area for large warehouses and developments. We're raising our farmland and open space rate one half cent, which equals to about $11 per household. This will give us the resources to be able to save more parks, more farms and open space, and prevent additional warehouses in areas we prefer to remain open. This is in direct response to the outcry we've heard from residents about the traffic and environmental consequences of these large facilities. We've heard you, and this is our direct response. This week, Moody's Investor Services issued a report that said the county's financial position has remained strong despite the coronavirus while maintaining our strong AA1 credit rating. 
Recent New Jersey Department of Community Affairs property tax data also showed Burlington County has the lowest average county taxes in New Jersey in 2019, 2020, and 2021. We expect this budget will allow us to remain the lowest in 2022 as well. We're proud of that record, but we're also proud we've been able to accomplish this while still responding to our residents' needs, especially with all the challenges we face from COVID-19. This is what our residents have come to expect from us, and we're proud that we're able to deliver once more. For anyone with questions about the budget, please email your questions to budget at co.burlington.nj.us. Thank you, folks. We're now moving on to public comment on the remaining agenda items. That's you, Louise. Yep. <laughs> Any wishes, anyone who wishes to speak on other topics will have a chance to do so later in the meeting. As a reminder, each speaker is limited to four minutes and may only speak once per comment function. Luis, I'm going to let you go first. We have one other person. Okay, good evening. And Felicia, nice track, lovely. <laughs> uh, for our comment on our solid waste, it's to handle the same process as before. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you say that. Okay. Uh, if you were in the right spot, I was in the wrong. Sorry about that. Um, probably comment on uh, how the, the solid waste is being processed. It's to be the same. No, it isn't that. It's more a capacity issue at our landfill. Is going what beyond a hundred percent? No, no, we're, we're looking to we're looking to add to it. Oh, oh, expansion. Yeah. And uh, and uh, question. Um, I see uh, you got grant for COVID nineteen relief on small business. Which I don't know you're talking about. Like I think I don't know, like like J seven eight nine. What, what, what is your question? Uh, that's the grants for the COVID nineteen relief, or no? These are small. These are small business help loans that we're talking about. Oh, okay. That was money that was made available due to coronavirus for uh, small businesses that could get loans up to fifty thousand dollars. Give me one more. I got some more other questions and I'll tell a comment. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Liz. Bishop Charles Vincent. I get that name right, Bishop? You did well. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Welcome. Well, thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm actually on both lists, so I don't know if I'm on the right one for what I'm about to pick up. There's a property at 507 East Front Street in Florence, New Jersey. I've written several letters. And the reason for my writing those are because my church, which is Brinson Memorial Church, 200-204 Brinson Memorial Drive, Trenton, New Jersey, um, we want to acquire that property um, and make it a uh, parish house, uh, mission house, um, and I've gotten no response at all from any of the correspondents that I've written to um, the board. No, I said I'd come down here today talk to you all, maybe I can Can I ask a question? Is the property you're talking about, this is in Florence? Yes. Is it owned by the county? Yes. It is. Yes. Um, if you could give your information to one of our staff, I can't answer it. I'd tell you if we can sell it to you or how it would go about being acquired. And I don't know why if you contacted us uh, and haven't gotten a response. I, I know I haven't seen any correspondence. I spoke to was it Amy? Um, somebody in the director's office. Um, she had a short name, I can't remember. Um, a couple times. And I don't have an Amy here. But if you'll give us your information, we'll, we'll look into what, so, what needs to be done. Um, Charlene or David? Thank you. Somebody want to take this information for us? Do we have any other public comments on agenda items? One more time. Okay, we're going to move on to resolutions. 
I would like to make a motion to approve resolutions J1 through J20 for unanimous consent. J1 through J26. By unanimous consent, seconded by Sam. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. I'll move uh, Deputy Director Pulliam's resolutions. Yeah. Oh, I move them all. Oh, okay. Mr. Hobson? Thank you, Director. I'd like to um, move with unanimous consent J27 through J35. Second. Motion by Hobson, seconded by Sam. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes. By saying, seconded by Hobson. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. We are now looking for nominations for Burlington County Controller for a three year term, effective January 1, 2022 through December 31, 2024. I would like to nominate Don Dawn Bloom. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. Please vote by name. Aaron, please do a roll call. Commissioner Hobson? Go on, go on. Commissioner Singh? Go on, Director O'Connell? Go on, Gorman. Congratulations, Don. Do we have any questions from the media tonight? Do we have any questions from the media tonight? Seeing that, I'm closing this portion of com public comment. We will now begin public comment on non-agenda items. Each speaker is limited to four minutes. They may only speak once for the public comment portion. When it is your turn, please state your full name and address for the record. Bishop, we have you again. I think the bishop left. No, I'm here. Oh, no, you are. Would you like to speak again? No. You just didn't know. OK. Thank you. Thank you. Ann Rapisardo? donors, we had close to 2,600 donors, most who live in Burlington County, 
um, helped us raise $414,000 last year for our mission. Uh, we also held our signature event, Paw Prints, at Smithville Park on October 10th. We had um, 460 runners and walkers and several thousand people attend. It was a great day and a celebration of all our hard work. Um, and I would like to thank the county for hiring a full-time vet that was a significant improvement, as well as hiring a full-time director that is actually accessible and open to our ideas. So we're very pleased with those two items. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, together we can achieve our vision of a new social shelter in Burlington County. And following me, I just have a few speakers who would like to share a little bit more detail on the initiatives that we set forth for dogs and cats and, um, and then we'll wrap up. So thanks for uh, having us. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Okay. See Willow Hanson? I got it right? Yes, you did. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I live in uh, West Hampton. Hello, my name is Seawall Hansen. I've been a Burlington County resident since 2004. I'm a cat foster parent for Peak Paw Podcast. During the peak season, as many as 250 cats or kittens are in foster at any time. Podcast is able to double our capacity at that time. We take and post all cat pictures on social media and maintain a cat inventory. We evaluate the wild room to see if any cats that are there are just spared or are they truly feral. Our volunteers actively engage rescues to help us relieve overcrowding and get animals who don't show well out of the shelter and to rescues who are better able to get these animals adopted. We obtain costly, especially medical care for animals who would otherwise not be adoptable. Our volunteers spend hours socializing kittens, fostering, helping with potential adopters to make a difference in the life of these sheltered cats. I'm also the TNR coordinator for podcasts. TNR stands for Trap, Neuter, and Return of Community Cats, and it's the program that addresses the growing problem in Burlington County of free roam of cats. A sad statistic is that 75% of the kittens that are born in the wild don't make it to six, to six months. There's a lot of hardship, in, uh, and there's also for outdoor adult cats, there's a life expectancy of three years versus the, the expectancy of 16 years if they were inside. There's a lot of hardship and suffering that's going on outdoors, and the TNR group works to alleviate it so, as, as much of this as we can. TNR is one of the key initiatives to help Burlington County get to no kill by 2025. I just wanted to give you a quick summary of the statistics for, for podcast TNR from 2021. We spent 20, I'm sorry, we spent $61,000 in 2021. Some of the key activities supported were spay neuter surgeries, where we spent $34,000. $20,000 went to medical care for injured community cats, with the rest of the expenditures going to transportation and housing facilities. All of these were supported by the generous donations to podcast. There were over 1,000 community cats that were spayed and neutered in 2021. Unfortunately, it's estimated that there may be over 40,000 community cats uh, in Burlington County. So it's a daunting task. We did make some progress in that we kept these cats from reproducing and keeping them out of the shelter. To that end, the, the live exit rate for cats went from 78% in 2020 to 82% in 2021. We're making significant progress, but we still have a stretch to reach no-kill status for the shelter, which is 90% by 2025. Community cats, which are free roaming cats in the community, can either be ferals, friendlies, or kittens. We get requests from the public, and the project usually re re includes a combination of those categories. While we are a TNR group, that is, we support trap, neuter, and return, or friendlies who have been adopted, kittens who can be socialized and adopted, returning to their original location is not in the best interest of those cats. We also find cats in situations where they are in danger. In these events, we work to find other solutions other than returning them to their original location. We support a variety of uh, activities where TNR is not the solution. For the friendlies or kittens, we surrender or foster them through the shelter or rescues. 
We work to use barn programs for those ferals that need to be relocated. We have two facilities that we call kitty condos where Mount Laurel Animal Hospital and Miller Subaru allow us to showcase grammars. We participate in adoption events such as the one that was just held in Subaru. Can I go on or am I done? How much more do you have? Uh, I just have one more paragraph. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> TNR is a complex problem that we are working to support with a variety of activities. Trapping is only one part of what we have to do to help community cats. There are over 70 volunteers that perform a variety of activities, including trapping, answering public day flyers, scheduling clinics, arranging transportation, maintaining our kitty car, managing a halfway house. Recently, we had multiple house building events to build shelters for these community cats. TNR is the only effective method of community cat management. There are over 600 cities and counties that have TNR programs or policies. There are numerous scientific studies that support TNR. The alternative methods of lethal control or non-feeding have been shown to not work, and they in fact exasperate the problem. When cats are removed, it creates what we call a vacuum effect, and other cats will move into that territory. Over time, TNR will always be less expensive than methods that have been shown to not work. We encourage citizen participation. We say that we want to teach people how to trap rather than trap for them. This community effort, along with nonprofits subsidizing the cost, makes TNR less expensive than methods that actually don't work. With that, I thank you for your time. Thank you. Jill O'Dwyer, is it? Jill Dwyer, and I've been a Burlington County resident for the past 29 years, and I am part of the Friends Dog Leadership Team, and we are the largest county in New Jersey with the only open intake shelter in the county. And I'm going to talk primarily about the dogs. Most of the dogs that come into our shelter aren't the designer dogs and the, um, and the pure breeds that everyone is looking for. Most of the dogs that come into our shelter are pit bulls, Staffordshire Terriers or staffy mixes, pit mixes, and some mixes of who knows what along the way. And we, we have over 100 kennels at the shelter and they're full of them. And because we have so many at the shelter, it makes most of them so hard to get adopted. And we know as friends, we know, we understand the challenges and we have stepped up to keep our dogs safe great and the no kill level. And we're doing a really great job with that. In 2020, when the, shelter, when the shelter was closed for most of the year, we had 364 dogs adopted, which was amazing. In 2021, there were 371 dogs adopted, and the shelter was primarily, primarily closed to the public throughout 2021, and we needed to schedule an appointment to, to go see your animal, to adopt your animal. So how is Bobcats working with the shelter to help these dogs get adopted? So, for, first of all, we have a volunteer photographer who comes in and helps to take pictures along with the shelter photographer so we can have the best picture shown online, which is really, really helping. This year, we've added um, <coughs> videos to every single profile of the dogs. So they're about 30 to 45 seconds. It really shows the dog's personality and then, and then interacting with a volunteer and a human to really see the personality come out. That has really, really impacted and making a difference with these adoptions because they're very steady. But unfortunately, so is dog intake. It's steady too. So FOBCAST offers an ongoing senior promotion where they prepay adoption fees for seniors, cats and dogs, eight years and older. So in 2021, FOBCAST paid for 46 senior adoptions. So 46 seniors got adopted, that's awesome. Um, FOBCAST also, has additional promotions throughout the year that we go with the county. I think the county in March is offering $25 adoption fees. So then what will happen is Fobcast will pick up um, whatever the county is and do a Fobcast will have a promotion. So these include free adoptions for the animals. It can be reduced adoption fees and it can be like an incentive anywhere from a PetSmart gift card, depending on what we have going on to give incentives to help bring the public in. Um, for for 2021, the total spent for promoting these animals was $7,380 was spent for that. So that's, that's pretty good. In 
In 2022, we've allocated $10,000 for post-adoption training for the harder to adopt dogs, longtime residents, and those overlooked dogs. So that means we can help 29 dogs um, get off to a strong start with their families by offering four weeks of in-home training. The hope is to have a successful adoption and less dogs being returned to the shelter. And if it is successful, successful, we can budget for more dogs in 2023. So FOBCAS is also working with the shelter director to start up an enrichment program to help keep the dogs more stimulated and engaged in the kennels. So these are some of the examples of what the dog volunteers and FOBCAS are working on for our county shelter. So let's work on no kill status together and adopt, don't shop, and save a life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you rehearsed this way too many times. <laughs> Al Martino? Yeah. Hi, I'm Al Martino. I'm a resident in uh, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And I've been a resident for about 14 years. For the past three years, since my retirement as a special education teacher in 2017, I've become a full-time volunteer with the Burlington County Animal Alliance. I'm not with Bobcats, so I just want to uh, clarify these are my uh, partner people, but I'm from the uh, Burlington County Animal Alliance. My primary role is serving as the organization's adoption coordinator, but I also volunteer at our adoption center where I clean, feed, provide playtime for the cats and kittens while they wait for their forever home. I, am frequent, I frequently go out into neighborhoods and streets throughout our county rescuing abandoned, neglected, and homeless cats and kittens at the request of our residents. Many residents will reach out to me by phone, telephone calls, or social media. Like wonderful folks at Bobcas, we work to see as many animals as we can, and we work tirelessly to reach the No Kill 2025 initiative, a goal which seeks to ensure that our county shelter is managing intake so, it, so as not to have to euthanize animals for any reason other than medical necessity to relieve suffering. After all, there is truly a clear distinction between the need for euthanasia and simply having to kill because the shelter cannot logistically keep up with the volume of animals they are required to intake. You, rem you may remember that, the Bur that Burlington County endorsed the goal uh, to use euthanasia only when it is absolutely necessary for medical reasons by passing a no-kill county resolution in 2019. I certainly remember standing here at this very place along with many other active residents who work in the same area as me and who also care very deeply about the plight of neglected, abandoned, and homeless animals to strongly urge the county to adopt that very important initiative. While improvements have been made and I appreciate the efforts of the current commissioners and the county staff. The unfortunate reality is we are barely keeping up with all the cats and kittens that are constantly and consistently dumped or born into homelessness. It is truly exhausting for all of us to see all, all the heartbreak that the shelter staff must endure when they are needlessly forced to kill hundreds of cats each year many of whom do not need to be in the shelter intake in the first place. Your constituents donated over $400,000 to non-governmental charitable groups last year. <clears throat> there are also hundreds of county residents who have participated in helping groups like ours to track and rescue as many homeless and abandoned animals as they can. This demonstrates their unbelievable resolve to save our animals. Many other counties in New Jersey have robust TNR programs, and their commission and their commission boards are partnered with area rescues like the Burlington County Animal Alliance to 
to solve this issue. They have arrangements with local towns and work to manage intake of community cats into the shelter. Can I go on? How much more do you have? Uh, not, not very much at all. Is there another one coming? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, go ahead. Recent, recently. My colleagues are going to kill me. But <laughs> recently, AHS shelter covering Newark, our state's largest city, um, achieved no still no kill status largely by managing the intake of feral cats. If they can do that, Burlington, Burlington County can certainly do it as well. Bacchus has been trying for years to gain the support through multiple meetings and presentations, and yet to date, I understand that the county is still using outdated service agreements from decades ago, inadequate, up-to-date best practices, and archaic pricing models, which continue to cost the county taxpayers even more. <clears throat> the clear truth is that taxpayers in most of the towns in the county should not be paying to kill hundreds of cats from our top five or six worst offending towns that continue to send cats to our shelter with impunity. We need to work together to fix this issue. There are numerous professionals and dedicated experts and advocates who are at your disposal to help address this issue, and we really cannot wait any longer. At the very minimum, you owe it to our county shelter staff and to their physical and emotional well-being. We should be helping them to work in a positive and rewarding environment where they are helping the community to save lives and to focus on focus their attention and energy into rehoming homeless animals and not forcing them to have to continue to work in an environment that is responsible for killing hundreds of cats per year. If anything, they deserve this, which is absolutely proven to be achievable. Again, I thank you for your time, your attention, and your past support you have provided to the shelter and to our county donors. This is a simple plea, um, recognizing that we still have more work to do, and we are here to support you and to urge you to make these changes and bring them to fruition. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. And last but not least, Luis, you have a question for non-agenda yep. items? Yep. Well, good night, I'm Lewis Lopez, and I did live a try. I just got curious for one book at the library, you know, if I may, if I can add. I'm sorry, Lewis. I just, I'm just curious about one book. I wonder if you had this book at the library. It's a history book. I wouldn't know. You'll have to check with the library. I know, the reason I add is some of the library took this book off the shelf. You what? can check the internet. I no, some, it's a history book. Is it explaining about the Holocaust? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just curious if you have it. We wouldn't be surprised if we didn't have it. We have a pretty extensive collection in our libraries, but our county administrator gave you the best advice. Yeah, yeah our say, library catalog is available at bclsorg Yeah. Uh, okay. My second is a, a direct message to uh, the Penalty County uh, Amory Shelter. If they have any senior, well, I say seniors, Chihuahua, they should go, you know, contact me directly or you could contact me. I will, you know. Well, if you contact our shelter. Yeah, just like I said, I or? have two already. Okay. <laughs> They're 17 uh, and 18 years old. Okay. That's real long. Well, I think you got your best people. Yeah. 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 Let me go and see what they got. Yeah. There's one, but it's on Riverside and, and that's uh, 18 and a half years old. Yeah, those little ones last longer than the big ones. <laughs> uh, can you clarify uh, J33 for me? J33? Um, yes. I'm just puzzled. We're just, we're just canceling the RFP, probably because there weren't enough adequate responders. Oh, okay. Okay, it might, it might come up again. And my last question is, I want to thanks to Google to, um, to restore my first YouTube uh, video account. 
Uh, you know Brian, uh, Brian Orhart, she used to, to, used to be the, a Freeholder member, right? I don't recognize that name, I'm sorry. Uh, Marion O'Brien. Yeah, oh, Brian. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's now a judge. Okay. Okay. Remember, I've been recording all the radio from that time. It got restored back to my account from the freeholder from the 19, from the 1999, 2000, you know, summer 2001. That's a long time ago. Yes, it is. Uh, if you really want to know what I really wrote, just all one simple word. Mount Holly, M-U-A. Why I pick a name? I'm trying two minutes to pick a name. And two minutes up, then he came up and it was available and I mm. took it. It's a Mahani MUA and look at your YouTube. You never cease to amaze me. I want to tell you, and we're really happy that you come to our meeting. And uh, I'm just curious, are you going to go to, um, go to the freeholding meeting to East Township? Are you going to do that in the future? No, there's no plans to move anywhere. As a matter of fact, I think our bylaws have us meeting here all the time. Oh, I'm just curious, Don't I mean. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I think. Okay. Simply because there's, it's hard to get a venue where we can have as many people as want to show up. We go to other places; they may not have a, an area for us that is that big. And a quick comment on a, a, this, a, a officer who works at the Bounty County. I don't know which county it is. There was a, a, a resident who was walking on the highway. He got lost. One of the officers stopped him and assisted him to go to a nearby uh, place so he could call his family. And it was in the news. I think I think a week ago. And he thanked that officer for giving him a, you know, a safety ride to a, a safe location. Right. He's a county county, I think, an officer or a sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Anybody else for public comment? I'm going to close the public portion of this meeting. And before my fellow commissioners and, uh, and myself have any comments for this evening, I'd like to thank podcast for coming out here tonight. Uh, and I was glad to hear your remarks and you've shared them with me before about our new shelter director uh, and our new vet. And I'll make sure that both of them uh, hear about your showing up here tonight and, uh, and your, your kind comments. And I want to thank you as well as all the volunteer organizations that we have in Burlington County. One of the things I've learned since becoming a county commissioner, we have a volunteer organization for our library. Uh, I can go through a whole list. And without you, uh, what, we, what you folks do, we would have to do by raising taxes on residents. So I want you to know that we appreciate that. But even more, on a personal level, uh, you folks helped when I was fostering uh, Bingo from the shelter, who I went and got mainly to bring home because at the, at the time the shelter was at capacity. Uh, I brought him home. Uh, he had mass cell tumors on his rear uh, hind quarters. I took him to Mount Laurel Animal Hospital and Fobcast paid the bill. And that is one of the problems we all have to look at when it comes to cats and dogs. One issue came up in that a lot of people thought during the pandemic it'd be a great idea to go adopt a dog or a cat. Then they went back to work. Then they couldn't figure out what to do with the dog or cat and guess where it ended up. That's one issue. The other, and I shared this with Mount Laurel Animal Hospital, I haven't had a dog in 14 years. And when I get a vet's bill, uh, I, I can't believe it. And, uh, and listen, I understand you know medicine is, is an expensive field, but that's also contributing to that. As a matter of fact, Bingo was surrendered to the shelter, and I'm wondering if the people took it to the vet, the vet told them what needed to happen, and when he was hit with a four-figure price tag, or she was hit with a four-figure price tag, they decided to surrender the dog. So uh, there's a host of issues. You're right, in 2019, we did commit to TNR. We're still committed to that. But I will tell you this. All the easy things, they get done real quick. It's the difficult and the hard issues that take time. And government, for a variety of reasons, doesn't always move as fast as it should. But we're committed to that. I just wanted to say thank you all again for being here this evening. And now for comments by commissioners. Commissioner Sands, anything for us to make? Um, thanks, first of all, uh, Louis, thanks. Uh, you are our uh, non-officially designated historian uh, for YouTube records and Facebook records of all meetings, I'm sure, uh, ever since Facebook started. 
Uh, so thanks for all this coming in. Uh, and thanks for pointing out those three items that you had, GS7, 8, and 9. Uh, those are the small business uh, covert loans up to $50,000. Those are three businesses that are, um, you know, applied for it and getting those. So we still have funds. Uh, spread the word uh, around so more of those, that money can be made available to residents before it gets yanked back uh, by the federal government. But right now it is there to be taken. Um, Thanks uh, and uh, congratulations, Don, for your dedication to the county and for your appointment. Um, and um, to thank you to all of you. Uh, I don't think, I think rarely a meeting goes by, typically every other meeting goes by, but I do to accept donation from somebody who has in love with our animal shelter. They had animals before and, and they were in contact, contact with your organization. They were so impressed, as director mentioned, by the work that you do that they end up uh, writing the county as, as the uh, people to receive the assets uh, uh, you know, of the estate after uh, their lifetime. Uh, it is, every single time we get those requests approved, it, it always amazes me uh, how much um, you know, uh, in love people are with the work that you guys have done. Uh, yes, it's, it is because of your outreach efforts and your nonprofit work that you do to make it a bit um, possible for others to adopt and, and uh, set us on a path to uh, get to the um, uh, the no-kill um, uh, goal by 2025. So thanks for all that. Back to you, Director. Thanks, Commissioner. Commissioner Thompson. Thank you, everyone, for coming and joining us this evening. Appreciate it. Thank you. And, it's, and I echo that. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out here tonight. It's nice to be meeting back in uh, in person, and hopefully we're going to continue to keep doing that. I'd like to add my congratulations to Dawn uh, going in on her position as our uh, Burlington County Controller and wish her all the best. And I want to thank uh, Commissioner Singh for the reminder on these help loans. These are small business loans, no interest, uh, up to a, a maximum of $50,000. And we have until the end of June to get that money all out the door or it's going to go back from whence it came. So if any of you have a small business or know of a small business owner, uh, please share that information. and. I tell people this at every meeting I go to. Please look to our website and our Facebook pages. We try to push out as much information as we can, and we need that shared as, as wide and as far as possible. Tonight, we introduced our budget. Uh, last Friday, I had the opportunity to address the Southern New Jersey Chamber of Commerce uh, as their keynote speaker to give an overview on the county's economy. I want to thank them for the invitation, and I was happy to share with them uh, the good news of what's going on in the county. Um, as we like to say, the money we collect from taxpayers, uh, we always have to remind ourselves it's not our money, it's their money. And we try to do the best that we can for the most residents in the county. So again, everybody, thank you for being here tonight. And